Skillet Sports presents... You're listening to The Sizzle on Iron Skillet Radio and Iron Skillet Television. <laughs> Welcome in, everyone, to another edition. You know it's this time when we get hot money. Oh, baby, this is The Sizzle's presentation of Hot Money, and we're here with Simone Quezon, a agent, uh, insurance agent. She's an owner. She's a super chick. And uh, she is the dopest chick on your timeline of cannabis and LLC. She is Simone Quezon. And she's going to give us some of the best information that we're going to get when you look for information right now of what's going on in stocks, what's going on around the world, what's going on in markets. You, there's only one place you can go to. That's the sizzle. And the only place that you need to hear is Simone Quezon. Trust me, it'll all make sense in a minute because we're going to go through a lot. So for the next 30 minutes, we're going to just sit and talk and chop it up and give you the information that you need. But before we can do any of that, first, I have to say hello to you, Simone. How are you doing today? I am amazing, amazing, amazing. How are you, my love? You're looking good as always. Thank you, my dear. And you look beautiful as always. I like the glasses. I like the style. Okay. That's okay. something I'm going to have to rock. I'm going to have to okay. rock that and, and really... I'm going to put that into my repertoire. You'll put see. it into your repertoire. I like that. I like that. So what, what's up? What's up, everybody? How is everybody doing? Everybody in the listening world? Of course, it's Simone Quezon, the dopest chick on your timeline. And we are going to talk about what? The same stuff that I usually talk about, money, stocks, and weed. So let's hit it. All right. So let's get ready. Let's jump right into it. Let's talk about money, stocks, and weeds. Let, let's talk about it first, but we got to talk about it from a slant. We're going to talk about minority investment if that's okay with you does that work with you of course of course of course right. so um one of the biggest buzzwords that we have heard um I, well we've had a lot of buzzwords right in 2020 we've heard um of course quarantine um pandemic and and COVID 19 and coronavirus and all those other things but one of the things that we have continued to talk about is cannabis and what we consider racial equity now before it was called social equity and we they kind of the powers that be and um the people that are in the industry really said okay so Social equity, yes, we definitely need to be socially conscious, but this whole movement is bigger than uh, being socially conscious. We need to really kind of identify who's being, um, who's reaching the disparity. And so that, that narrative changed to racial equity, just really defining that it is the displacement of black and brown people and their communities um, being pushed outside of or not having entry into the campaign of the space, right? And so as more and more states become legalized, we're seeing this growing opportunity in this merging market, but it is still creating um, hurdles that most brown and black people are having a, a horrible time entering in. And at the, at the end of the day, when you're in a, a market or anything, if you're selling business, timing is everything, right? right. So the two right. buses that you hear is location, 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 and timing right. and timing. And so both of those things are kind of shielding against black and brown people getting into the green rush. So what do we have right now um, is that more and more states as they become legalized and even the ones that are medical or recreational are definitely learning and understanding that there is profit in diversity, hmm. right? And so as we look at consumer dollars, there's a leverage there as African American women are be, um, are the most um, influential dollars that the United States have. In addition to that, also employment, creating fair wages, and then last but not least, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial um, endeavors to be able to create funding so that there can be uh, or capital building so that these businesses can be sustainable and work in the space. Okay, so let's talk about working in the space. When we talk about marijuana opportunities, because yeah. we're talking about money, stocks, and weed. Money, so one of the things, weed. if we're talking about money, stocks, and weed, we got to tell people, what's, what are their opportunities in weed? What do we do with weed? How do we get opportunities? And we're still talking about minority investment. So 
how do we get opportunities in weed? Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to say is that the cannabis industry is an industry, emerging industry, just as any other one. And so us in the cannabis space, we need everything from web designers to counselors to attorneys, accountants, um, social media managers, uh, mm -hmm. all kind of things, because this market is so emerging and so unique, right? And so being able to become an expert expert in the field is very, very important. One, because state laws are constantly changing. Municipality laws are constantly changing. Um, federal, uh, because it's not federally legal, there's a, additional hurdles. So there's absolutely nothing that you could probably do in, um, in another sector that you can't do in cannabis. That's the first thing. The second thing, so those businesses that I kind of named are what we consider ancillary. Uh, they're a little bit easier to get in. Ancillary simply means non-touch. Okay. These businesses do not require state and local licenses. Um, my company as an insurance agency where we uh, do the protection from seed to sell, everything in between, it is my job and my agent's job to know the business backwards and forwards. That's the only way that we can really give great recommendations. Um, and we pose our, our agency as um, we're cannabis pro professionals, you know, that we just happen to do insurance, but we're cannabis professionals. Um, in addition, and craft beer. Okay. In addition to that, making sure that, um, that you understand what you're getting into. Um, the cannabis business changes every day. Uh, one of the roles that I get a chance to do is that I get a chance to hold a seat um, with the Michigan Regulatory Marijuana Regulatory Association, where uh, we um, kind of help give a racial expect um, uh, racial perspective on how bills and, and, and other things will change and, and, and impact people of color. So I share all that to say is that wherever states you're in, understand this is not an industry for the week you need to make sure that you are constantly i mean constantly understanding that things are going to change if you're a crybaby and you really really don't love this situation and you're looking for a, a get rich quick kind of thing this is not for you mm -hmm. the next thing that i would probably say is that one of the things that i hear all the time especially from people of color is that we only think of a dispensary when we think of um, into the cannabis space. And that is so horrible. Let me explain something to you. You want to find the most unhappy person on any organization? It is the person at the cash register. Mm. I don't care if you selling dope or dog food. The most ha unhappiest person, when you go to the grocery store, the person that has an attitude is not the manager in the back. It's not the stop person, it's the person at the cash register. Right. So you go and open up a dispensary, you become the person at the cash register. You're going to be the one that's the end user, that's gonna to talk to the end user. All of the complaints and everything that you have comes there. So I need people of color to understand that there are many jobs and in, in, in opportunities in cannabis. Think broader than a dispensary if that is not where your passion is, right? Okay. Other thing is I constantly get people that say, oh, Simone, I'm going to be a grower. And I say, hey, okay, this is great. So you, you you farmed before. Now, what a lot of people don't know, even though I'm the dope chick and I'm a city chick, my mother used to send us out to my family's farm. So I know a little bit about farming. Okay. I say, oh, you've been a farmer. And they say, no. I say, okay. I say, so you have a garden. They say, no. I said, so you had a guard. He said, no. I said, well, you get out my face. You are not, this is not what you should be doing, right? right? You, you 40, 50 years old, this ain't the day for you to pick up. This is a commodity. Do you understand that not growing, um, that you can sink all of your money into this crop? And if it does not harvest, insurance only going to give you 80%. Right. And then your loss, you take a loss. Your on the loss, your loss, and that's that's if they deem that it wasn't your fault. Right. We right. don't we don't pay it out when it was your fault, crazy. <laughs> because you didn't know how to grow. <laughs> you didn't know how to harvest it. Right. right. Okay. So yeah, nobody's nobody's giving you money for that. <laughs> so if you don't know how to grow a harvest, one of the things is maybe this might not 
that might not be the avenue for you. But as you mentioned, Mm -hmm. But there's so many different um, opportunities. And I think um, right now what I'm doing in Michigan is one is uh, we're going to talk about the, 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 the stock exchange. We'll talk about that. But I mm -hmm. think one of the big things is is the disconnect is on educating ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I get people all the time in my inbox. Oh, Simone, how do I get in? OK how much time and money are you willing to invest oh well i don't know well how much have you looked at i don't know listen let me explain something to you i'm not your life coach mm -hmm. i run a business so if you're not willing to do the due diligence to find out what it is that you want to do this is not the space for you you right. need this is not a place for the week when you come in and you start looking for capital and you start to get into this business people in this business we know what we want. We're asking for what we want. If you're just getting in, and mind you, you know, this is still early, but it's late, right? Mm -hmm. If you understand that. It's still an early emerging and there's still enough space, but there are a lot of other entities who have been in inception for three, two or three years who are ahead of the game. So you just got to know that. So when you get to that point, make sure that you truly, truly understand that you got to know what you want. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you want to go into edibles, you need to know about edibles. Mm -hmm. Right. And you need to be good at doing, making whatever you're trying to sell. I mean, that would be one thing. You should be, yeah. at, at least have some knowledge of it. Yeah. I mean, take your classes. This is a real business. Okay. People, uh, you follow me on Facebook. You know how much I work. This right. week, and, and so, uh, mind you, I get a chance to have a lot of fun. Right. And so I get a chance to go to dispensaries and grow houses and, mm -hmm. and breweries and distilleries and all of this. And I can get drunk and high all day and still close a hundred thousand dollar deal. <laughs> but with that being said, we'll work seven days a week. Like this weekend is a work weekend. We have major projects and contracts or whatever that have to be done. So you have to take this business serious. This is not day days chicken and waffle and weed joint. Those places will be closed down. <laughs> there we are. Oh, that, yeah. you got to come up with a plan. But you've talked about it, and you mentioned it a little, a few minutes ago. We're going to yeah. talk about local stocks and exchange, and and you're in Michigan right now. But yeah. there's something, there's something called an MMM, and I don't know what that is, and I don't think the listeners do, but I think you do. So, would yeah. you share with the listeners what you're doing in Michigan right now? as it relates to stocks and how that kind of works and, and how you're involved in it. Okay, well, this is my baby. Um, mm -hmm. And so you guys will see this come out. Um, I wish I could tell y'all that I was this genius, genius, genius woman. Well, you know, I can, but I got grabbed. So anyway, um, I want to share with you guys what a local stock exchange is. And a lot of people don't know what that means. So local stock exchanges are not a new thing, right? Um, they actually started, uh, I think the first one was like 1893. Um, and so what it was, was it was a, a, a way to be able to create a um, a stock, uh, a, a shared market. And this, this actually, like the local stock exchange started before uh, the real stock exchange, because I think the real one wasn't until 1913. Don't quote me but I should know that but anyway I digress the one that we know it um so anywho let's let's move forward so uh local stock exchanges were created to have and they're usually in smaller demographics and there were ways where uh individuals in that community in that state in that municipality or whatever could pull their money together to be able to help establish um businesses now let me tell y'all something this ain't susu so so, ho ho, doo doo, whatever it is, this is not that. Okay? okay, I want you. I want to be clear because there are rules and regulations that go along with this. This is not a funnel down or anything like that. If that's what you into, y'all, this ain't what you want. Okay, mm -hmm. but locally, these things have happened. Matter of fact, one of the things, and they, we've seen it in Honolulu, we've seen it in, um, we've seen it in Seattle. Uh, one of their biggest breweries was actually a obtained, uh, um, uh, established from a local stock exchange. Us in Michigan, 
our industry, our automotive industry. Do y'all know the company that we know and love today as Chrysler started out as Maxwell and it got revved up from a local Detroit stock exchange, right? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Not something new. Well, in 2014, Michigan decided that they were going to reinitiate the local stock exchange. And y'all, let me tell y'all why they did it. Uh, Mr. Barack Obama in 2014 initiated what we call the Jobs Act. And the Jobs Act gave us crowdfunding, what we like to call Reg CF. So let me help you guys. Mm -hmm. Crowdfunding happens in three different ways. Like we did, and I'm gonna break it down to you. So the first crowdfunding is GoFundMe. And that means that I have a tragedy. I solicit y'all, y'all give me the money and I hope it work out for you. God is good, don't nobody say nothing. Okay. The next one is Kickstarter. Kickstarter mm -hmm. says, hey, you know what? I got this really cool idea. I am going to make a movie and I want you to invest in it. And if you do so, I'm gonna give you a funky t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Well, now the big one that we're talking about is called Reg CF. And Reg CF under the Jobs Act allows companies to in um to do crowdfunding and businesses can then issue out shares of their company to individuals. Now, there are some limitations on there. And then rightfully so because this is usually before these new businesses, this kind of opportunity was only granted to our accredited investors. People that had uh 200 $50,000 or more to be able to invest. Well, now you don't have to do that with Reg, uh, Reg, Reg CF. You can invest anywhere from $500 to $10,000 under this act, right? And so what Michigan decided to be able to do is they created this and then they also evolved so that in this, along with this, this narrative, um, they would be able to uh, limit the broker dealer, which is where the money comes from, into only the state. And so that's why I was able to come up with uh, an a avenue to be able to call it the Michigan uh, Marijuana Market, where minority businesses able to obtain investors um, up to a million dollars in 12 months to be able to uh, go into to invest in their business. Now, we have some smaller licenses. And if you guys know, um, probably even our smaller licenses are looking at about one to $1.5 million. So this fund does a couple different things. One, it allows the um, the entity to still keep the controlling interest of their business if they see fit. Definitely, in addition to that, uh, it allows individuals to actually buy back into their hood because they get a chance to invest in companies that are in what we consider our racial equity zones. Um, and in addition to that, I don't know no government fund that's gonna give, and I'm being conservative, 10 businesses or more a million dollars. I don't know no place that can be able to afford to do that. So the only way options that we do have is that we are able to invite and campaign um, other companies and other entities to be able to invest in these marijuana businesses for minorities. Wow, that is amazing. And so I that's know, right? open to anybody, right? <laughs> you wow. said what, Beth? Now that's open to anybody. That's anybody so, who wants no, okay, to So because it's a state, um, it's, a, it's a state program. Now, of course, you know that my initiative is to take this show on the road. Um, right. but I had to be able to do it in my home state first. Um, I am in talks in other states right now to be able to um, recreate this model, but we're starting it off now. Um, and so because it is intra. That is the key to it. That's the only thing that makes it legal. The moment you sell it to someone else, the entities and the investors both must be residents of the state. Okay. So they both have to be residents. Okay, that makes sense. But it's such a it it, it is such a booming opportunity. One that 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, no one even thought that this well, would it wasn't be a lane. It wasn't even available, right? right. So this is only available for us to be able to do this in the next six uh six in the last six years so a couple things which are really really important right um awareness and we've said this before so lack of education lack of awareness is a big big thing so we have to make the people in the community aware of it in addition to that of 
course, this is going into a bill initiative. So making sure that we um, have sponsors by our um, by our senators and by our state representatives and hosts of those, um, and really kind of campaigning. So I will be having a, a PR campaign that's coming out really, really soon. Um, like I think in the next couple of weeks, we, if you saw, I've been taking, I've been doing photo shoots all over. Yes. Yeah. Multiple photo shoots. Right. Get my, uh, Naomi Campbell, my tyrant, you know, whatever. Yes. My Instagram Your fashion model, model sense out there. Yeah. I yeah. It. Um, and so we're really going to try to get this information. Um, I'm champion to really get that out there. Uh, and, and just really have these great conversations because we know that investing as a whole, and even this ideal is, is foreign. To, to black and brown people, right? So right. I'm going all over the state, you know, explaining like, listen, this is what we got going on, and we have the, the we have the support of um the uh, of of the, of the state. Hopefully, going through this um once it's a, a, adapted into the bill, we'll be able to really push the narrative and get some work done. Now, let me ask this: How does this expand out to other states? How do you take this show on the road? and make it workable in different states. We ain't figured it out yet, but you know, God has a plan. I think um, more and more states will uh, see the opportunity in it uh, once we make it work. I, I, I've shared with a lot of people. I, said, I mean, you, you got to get a win first, right? So this is a really right. great idea, right? But hell, I don't know if this is going to work. We got to figure this out. You know what I mean? Let's, right. just be, let's be honest and transparent. It's a great idea. Do you know how many great ideas didn't work? And I'm True. not saying that it but all of that um, is going to be a part of how we get people's participation. You know, you could tell, uh, I could say that we're giving out five million dollars to the first 10 people well hell if don't nobody know about it by one it wasn't a success right? right so we we have to get a win up under our belt before we can start doing all of that you know so we'll see what happens yeah and that's the key the getting that one win that's what gets the ball rolling and that's how this whole thing opens up as it goes along because i can't see a state saying that this isn't a great opportunity yes, to bring you could. The yes, right. you could. yes they will Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Um, and so, like I said, most people, I, I see this a lot as I have relationships and, and conversations with clients. People don't understand. You got to get the win. People people want to back a winner. Right. You know what I mean? Because once you get a win, I can, I can tell them to do whatever I want them to do. Right. It's a different conversation when I won. Mm-hmm. People come to me all the time and I say, have you done that before? I say, yeah, I says, you, that ain't nothing but a good ass idea. You can get out of my office. Mm -hmm. The world full of them. Yeah. You got to be able to pull in one win and be able to replicate that. And then that way you can keep moving forward. It's going to be hiccups, you know, but our, our, our goal is to be able to right now is make sure that we continue to have the conversation that we continue to put a blue. Eye. I mean, I got so many hours in this thing, um, you know, just the, the different nuances and all that other stuff. So it's going to be interesting. Um, but this is a new opportunity. Um, I believe that it's definitely going to be great. You'll see it all over. We're going to get information out there. I think the biggest thing is um, us making sure that people will come on because we've even gotten into um, how we will vet companies. So again, there will not be a situation where we have like so so, you know, Dana's Dankin um, and Dookie braids. That won't be there. You know, it um the, the, these companies have to meet qualifications that are approved by the state, meaning they have to have their license, their real um their real estate must be obtained. They have to have registration with the local municipality. Um, they have to have a certain amount of testing that has been approved. I mean, they're you're going in to meet these qualifications. It's not like you just get on there because it's Tuesday. And we have to do things that will um ignite trust in the market mm -hmm. um, that will create sustainable businesses. And no, that does not mean that they will not go in and, and out of inception. And that's the risk that you take anytime you're in a business. But we want them to be qualified to be able to meet the minimum qualifications of being able to do business. Yeah, that <laughs> seems like the greatest thing. You know, we're getting ready to get out of here because I know you've got a lot to do. And we could sit here and talk all day. Like we all could do day. a two or all three day. hour show. We could do it all day. But before we go, 
I wanted to ask you to leave the listeners with something. What are your last thoughts? Something that you want to leave them with until we speak again. What is it that you want the listeners, this actionable thing? What is it that you want them to do and know from this conversation? I think what I would like everybody to know is, you know, we're coming out of this, you know, post-election. Um, and so we've seen so many different things kind of happen. Um, and I think it is very, very important. You know, we constantly look for advice um, from individuals. Uh, you guys tune in to me. Um, and I know recently we had a lot of advice from like celebrities or whatever, where that's not really their wheelhouse. Right. And so I don't take, uh, I wouldn't take how to cook a burger advice from somebody who was a vegan or a vegetarian. And so if these people are not your, um, uh, if they're not in a situation or they're not uh, experts in your field, don't take advice from them. And I think that's as far as the green rush or everything else, just making sure that you are finding uh, notable and viable individuals to be able to speak to um, and get information from. Um, and that's going to carry you a very, very big way. Whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's investing, whether it's in the green rush, whether it's, you know, finding whatever it is, make sure that you find someone that is credible and somebody that can give you uh, credible information. Yeah. And I think that is one of the biggest things that we've seen during this whole election series. Yeah. We've gotten so much misinformation in those who are not credible in their field and they're not the experts that you should be listening to. And I think that has caused so much problem and heartache through the last few months. And in fact, since the beginning of 2020, it's, yeah. been, a, it's been a hard struggle, but it's been a great year for you. And we applaud yeah. and salute you. 2020 don't owe me nothing. <laughs> we all know that 2020 don't owe me nothing. We have done phenomenal in 2020, but I will tell you this. I have worked more in 2020 than I probably um, had in any other year of my mm. life, um, but it has bared fruit. And, and, and I, I mean, I, that's what I think we have to get away from. Stop saying the narrative people. One, one lady said to me, she said, Ooh, girl, you know, we done been through so much. I said, girl, speak for yourself. Right. Put that tank on me. Right. That's right. Now that's you know it. Mean? You speak for I'm you. I'm joining that party with you. Yeah, it has to be positive energy. It has to be something that's bringing life to me. It has to be something that's bringing good stuff to me. So that's what you got to speak towards yourself and you got to speak towards your investments and your life. And this is where letting people know this type of information speaks positivity. It speaks life into that, not only their bank accounts, but into their mind and their soul. It puts people mm -hmm. at ease to know that your money now is appropriated the right way. And yeah. that you can get an investment off of whatever you sown. So yeah. that, I think that's the biggest key. And I think that's where we'll leave it with everyone. So before we go, you've got to tell everybody where they can get in contact with you and where they can reach you. And how do they follow you with all of this thing and everything that you're doing in the field? So make sure that you guys go to www.csimone, uh, which is C-I-M-O-N-E, Kason, C-A-S-S-O-N. You can go there. You can find out about, we have uh, classes. We have um, uh, webinars that we do every so often, just basic information on how you can become an investor. Um, and, and we talk about everything from cannabis to international, all kind of just general um, rules of thumb. So if you're interested in getting into the stock market or it may Maybe your portfolio isn't performing as best, then definitely this is an opportunity. And then, of course, if you're a cannabis business and you're looking for protection in Michigan, Illinois, or Massachusetts, then you can always reach out to us and go to our website at www.cannascapital, and that's C A N N A S C A P I T A L dot com. Um, and then last but not least, you can follow me on everything. Um, I tell y'all all the time, Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, Christian Mingle, uh, <laughs> anything you think of, uh, Black Planet is always the letter C and then C-I-M-O-N-E and then C-A-S-S-O-N. And that is a wrap, everybody. You know what this is. This is the Hot Money segment. This is the Sizzle's Hot Money with Simone Kaysan, the dopest chick on your timeline. We want to thank you for taking the time to listen and learn about your money and where you're going to get your best investment and how to come up. So thank you again, and we'll see you on the other side. Thank you for listening to The Sizzle, the hottest sports talk in the 219 here on Iron Skillet Television and Iron Skillet Radio.